everybody, I'm Spark249, welcome to episode 1 of Let's Play Casper for the PlayStation 1. So, uh, I'd say there's a good chance a lot of you have never played this game, because I, I don't think it was a very common game back then, but let's jump straight into this. It's a puzzle adventure game. I want to call it similar to Metroid, except with a lack of combat. Uh, you basically find abilities to act to bypass certain obstacles. So here's the introduction video. I put a video in a loose sense because it's a bunch of still images, but there's Casper up on that uh, upper section. I'm very happy. There's a girl in my house. I wonder if she'll be my friend. Maybe if I get them both a present, they won't be afraid of me. Act one. Find tokens of friendship. So here we are, we're going to start the game with Act 1, and there's three acts in the game. The second is the longest by far. But let's get uh, straight into this. So, the quick controls, just so that you all know what I've got to work with here, is I have an action button, which is X, a circle button, which is Use, a triangle button, which opens the inventory, and I'll explain those in a minute, and a square button, which is Examine. So if you walk up to something and examine it, uh, you'll see a line of text at the top, which is Casper's thoughts on it. Now, as a quick explanation, on the right here, you will see the four, four major aspects of the game. Iron keys, which unlock doors. Brass keys, which unlock chests. Fool's gold coins, which are nearly entirely useless. <laughs> and at the bottom, that's Casper's morph points, which will be important later, and we can refill morph points by picking up food. So as you can see, we're at 128 morph points. And we're pretty much useless right at the beginning of this game. We haven't got any keys, we haven't really got anything. So... If you haven't ever watched Casper, I highly recommend that you do so. Here's one thing, don't go in there. Um, the arrow usually means it's a good idea to go here. Going in that room right now is a very, very bad idea. So here you'll see an iron key. And if I walk up to a locked door, it has to look like this, by the way. Other doors require different kinds of keys. And push the action button. There we go, we've used an iron key because it breaks in the lock. And uh, yeah. Now, this door we don't have a key for, but if we pull this lever, the entire wall will slide away. How useful. Here's a brass key and a puzzle piece. And you might think that's all there is here, but see that, that glimmering on the end of this uh, knight's spear? Well, that means if we activate him, it's a secret lever. So here's an iron key and some more sandwiches, which are increasing our morph points. I'll explain that glimmering in a minute, but if we open here, there's another key. Now, if you know Casper's three uncles, Stretch, Stinky, and Fatso, they're all in this game, and they're all intent on stopping you. They've each got their own method of attack. Now, Fatso will hide in chests, so what we want to do is stand near the corner of it, open it, and back away. So he can't grab you. And to pick this up, by the way, you want to use L1 and R1 to ascend and descend, respectively. And there we go, we've got two jigsaw pieces. So now let's go around here. Now this requires a brass key to unlock. And there's a brass key. And this green door, by the way, will, if we examine it, will require a green key. And this is a button, so if we push it... It just unlocks another button. And if we push that, something moved somewhere, and you'll get a lot of that in this game. By the way, using a brass key to open this simply elicits another brass key. So it's a tad pointless, and you'll find a few of those. And here's another fatso chest. Not all of them have got fatso in them, by the way. But uh, a significant portion of them do. Now, what that thing actually, that button actually did, I believe, was move this portrait out of the way so that we can access this lever and open this door. There's another puzzle piece. Add some more keys and some more morph points. Um, you can tell if you can pull one of these levels, by the way, uh, because if there's cobwebs connecting the tip of the spear to the rest of the night, it can't be pulled. They will usually also glitter when you get close. Now, if I just go around here, if I open up my inventory now, you'll notice that I have three puzzle pieces and a weight. And I can drop the weight by pushing circle. You can also push L2 and R2 to cycle through your equipment, by the way. And uh, if you drop a weight on one of these pressure plates, it'll disappear and do something. And this one made a, pressure, a, a jigsaw piece appear. Now, these jigsaw pieces are pretty much the most important thing in the game. Uh, so if you, if you find these things, these por empty portraits, 
Um, each one will require four specific jigsaw pieces, and it just so happens that the four we have are the four this one requires. So by pushing circle four times, we'll finish the portrait, and it will give us a morph icon. Now, these morph icons allow Casper to change shape uh, by, by using them. And I think this is the only one which does not require morph points, the smoke morph icon. And this allows you to go through uh, usually inaccessible passageways. Mainly air vents. So if you go into an air vent, we'll pop out another air vent. And yes, we'll need quite a few more icons throughout the course of the game. They all do different things, they all enable us to bypass different areas. And I want to go through this one, because this enormous key right next to me is a green key, even though it does not look particularly green. So at the moment I've got a smoke morph icon and a green key. So let's go up here and to the left. And then by pushing circle we can use the green key to unlock this door. And yes, uh, there's three acts in this game. We're currently on Act 1. Find tokens of friendship. And there you see we've got a bag of false gold coins, which means 10. Um, and in Act 1 we simply have to... Um, find a present each for Cat and Dr. James Harvey. Here's another portrait. And you can, if you examine it, you'll be see it's Sir Stretch, Knight of the Ghostly Table. And this piece happens to fit in here. And if we go down this air vent, we go through a loading screen. And, oh, can't go any further here because this requires a red key. So once we find a red key, we'll remember to go down here. And we also can't get through this hole yet. This will actually require the second morph icon. So there's a lot of backtracking in this game. And I dare say I'm going to have to draw out a map for myself after each, after each episode so I know where I'm going. But by going up here, the lever we pulled in that, uh, door, in that room just over there opens up this door. By pushing this, there's a parchment, and if we examine it, oh, it's a little drawing. And if we match that drawing to these four knights, that door opens. But for now, I'm going to go through here to get a sandwich. And that lever didn't do anything, but that means that there's a door somewhere which requires more than one lever to be pulled. As you can see, this door here is locked for now. So we'll have to come back later to unlock that one. But by going down here... We'll be able to find the first of the two presents. It's on this bookshelf here. It's that book there which is going to flutter when I get close to it. So by taking it... It's a big book on the mind. Dr. Harvey would like to read this. So there we go. We've got a uh, book. A big book on the mind. And, yes, that's Dr. Harvey's present, so now we just need to find something for Cat to finish Act 1. We found a brass key by using a brass key. Once again, you will find quite a few of those. As you see, there's a pressure plate here, so I'll need to find something to put on top of that. Now, the reason I'm going all the way down here, by the way, is this guy, he can, be, uh, he can have his spear pulled to reveal an iron key. And I'm probably going to run out of keys at some point or another. But I don't think it's possible to screw up this game by running out of keys. Here's another iron weight. Now, there's quite a few things in this game which have got strange requirements. Such as this iron gate here. Notice how there's two doors here. And I unlocked one of them, so unlocking the other one would seemingly be pointless. But the fact is, once you unlock both of them, that door opens. And now, you have to guess what the code is. And it's that. And once you've got it right, by the way, you can't push the buttons anymore. And you can unpush a button in codes like this. So, I know the first... I know the first act and a bit of this game off by heart. Even though I haven't played it in years. But, uh... Where am I going? I don't need to come down here yet. I need to go over here. So I'm trying to unlock this enormous gate here. 
And that creaking noise is usually a painting moving out of the way. And that is always a metal gate opening. But before I go up there, I can unlock this area. I can't do that. I was standing too close to the wall there, which is why Casper said that. So I swapped an iron weight for some more points, two keys, and a puzzle piece. So if we go in here, we're in the garden. So there's a jigsaw piece. If you activate the fountain, you'll be able to get a fool's gold coin, which once again are practically useless. Uh, we can't enter the maze yet, by the way. If we try, Casper's a bit too scared. I don't want to get lost in the garden maze right now. I have things to do. Like make friends with Cat and Dr. Harvey. And find the other half of your face, apparently. <sighs> and here's Cat's present, this rose. It's a beautiful red rose. This would make a great present for Cat. Okay, so now we have both presents, we can Ooh. safely approach uh, Cat and Dr. Harvey, and they will not scream and call the Ghostbusters. So I will go down there now. So yeah, I will draw a map for this and I may just, uh, if I can get it online, I might just provide it as a download in one of the last videos once I've completed it. But yes, th I'm just going to call this the Spiral Hall because it's pretty obvious why. As you see, there's quite a few exits from here. Uh, I don't actually want to go that way yet. There's nothing up there yet. Well, nothing I can access until I get a blue key. So you saw a purple door over there, which requires obviously a purple key. Uh, one, that is where Captain Dr. Harvey are. I'm going to ignore them for a minute. Because one thing you will notice is that air vents don't always lead to, the, uh, to a consistent location. The reason I'm going in here, by the way, is we're going into the attic to get this key. And you can see there's another green key over there, which will be useful. Even though it's amusing that every key you get seems to break the first chance you use it. So even though I came out of this left air vent, this right one will take me back to that hall. This left one will take me to an entirely new location. Where I not only get a lot of uh, morph points and a key, I also get to unlock this door. And what's in here, you may ask? Well, it's Casper's what uncle's bedroom. Here, <laughs> so here's Stretch, Fatso, and Stinky. Now, you know Fatso will attack me at certain chests. Stinky will attack me at certain air vents. When I go near to here, he'll try and hurt me. Smellogram. But he'll only ever attempt it once. There's some uh, morph points right there. Sideways chest, by the way, can never have that so in. Oh. Right, now, what Casper said there, and it always gets cut off, was, I found a secret room. So, yes, this room, as you can see, this door is quite secure. It requires not only a silver key, but it also requires a, a morph icon. So this room, aside from that uh, handful of fool's gold coins I picked up, is a little bit useless for now. Although I will write down to remember to bring a silver key. But now that I've uh, done a significant amount, let's go and talk to Cat and Dr. Harvey. So as you can see there guys, they're just going to sit casually on the bed as the ghost approaches them. Oh, they're both terrified. What? Who... Who are you? The end of you. I'm Casper. I'm a ghost, but I'm a friendly ghost. You have to trust me, please. Not that I'm desperate or anything. I... I guess. My name is Kat, and this is my dad, Dr. James Harvey. Therapist to the dead. Are you really a ghost? No, I just suffer from transparency. Yes, I am. And so are my uncles, Stretch, Stinky, and Fatso. You have to watch out for them. They are not friendly. 
and understatements. Later in Casper's playroom. What's it like to die? A normal question. Like being born. Only backwards. I remember. I didn't go where I was supposed to. I stayed behind. So my dad wouldn't be lonely. I remember now. He invented a machine to bring me back to life. The Lazarus. I remember! W where is it? My dad hid it so no one can find it. But I remember where it is. It's in the secret laboratory. Meanwhile, in the secret laboratory... Now that Casper has made some fleshy friends, he might get some fancy ideas about becoming a fleshy himself. Oh no. And we don't want that to happen. Right, boys? Oh! The amazing special effects! No! Who will cook for us? All right, boys. In priorities. We have to make sure Casper can't use that fleshy making Lazarus machine. So we'll disassemble it and hide the pieces where he can't get to them. Well, that's just mean. Assemble the Lazarus. And that was the entirety of Act One. Now for Act Two, which is going to take the majority of the game. So. Now that we're done there, the important thing to do is pick up the two very obvious items. The camera. It's a camera with a flash. It belongs to Dr. Harvey, but I don't think he'll mind if I borrow it for a while. So, and this, the perfume. And you will need to float up to get to that. This perfume smells great. It's cats, but I need it. I'm sure she wouldn't mind me borrowing it. I've only just met her and I'm already stealing from her. Wonderful. Also, unlock this uh, drawer here to get a puzzle piece. Jigsaw piece. So now that we're in Act 2, we now have the ability to fight the, uh, the ghostly trio for possession of parts of the Lazarus. So whenever you find one, these aren't bosses in the traditional sense. There's no health. Well, there is health. There's no, like, health meter, there's no combat. Instead, it's more of a puzzle. Find the way to defeat them. And that is what is through this mysterious door over here. One of the ghostly trio. Specifically, Fatso. So if we walk in here, Fatso will get his uh, one-liner before I fight. I want my dinner, Casper! Feed me! And he's also missing half his face. I wonder why that's happening. Anyway, yes. So, now this is... If we watch around, you'll see Fatso. He's going to keep chasing us down in this room, and you can use the air vents, if you wish, to teleport around. However, you haven't, don't currently have a way to defeat him, so you need to go into here, the kitchen. And there's two important things in here. One is, although there's a lot of uh, food here for morph points, there's also four hamburgers. So I'll avoid picking those up for a second and get everything else. So the four things which are left over are hamburgers. They're not morph points. They're items. And uh, they are what we're going to use to fight, Cas uh, to fight Fatso in this specific area. Uh, just keep in mind, the item you need to defeat them is not always right next to them. Also, pick up uh, this bucket. It's important for finding some secret areas. Though not for much else. So now that we have... Uh, the hamburgers, I'm going to select one of them. There we are. Now just lay one down, and Fatso will eat it. So lay another one down. Fatso will eat it. So lay another one down. Fatso will eat it. So lay another one down. Fatso will eat it. Once he's eaten all four, he'll go to sleep. Defeated. I found one of the missing Lazarus parts. See, Casper's got all of his face. Why can't the other ones take after him? Anyway, yes. So now we found the first of the missing Lazarus parts. The boss music will continue to play. Ignore it. So now we've got one Lazarus part back. Because Fatso is inept as usual. Now what you can use the bucket for is once you find a sink, and it has to be a sink, you can fill it with water and use it to extinguish these fires. And then you can use the fires to uh, go up in smoke. So uh, let's go and fight another of the ghostly trio. There happens to be one up this left-hand staircase. Now, there's a few doors up here, but this one requires a blue key. Hold up, let's just read this. And we have the nice narrator talk to us. There is more to Whipstaff Manor than meets the eye. 
Use the air vents to travel around once you've learned how to go up in smoke. So that is, of course, referring to the smoke uh, morph icon. There is another blue door. If you pull both of these, the door opens. However, there's another door behind it. So go down here and pull the lever. And in here, we'll be able to fight Stinky. And this is the reason you need the perfume. If you push circle while well, you have the perfume, you'll spray it. And this is what we're going to use to fight Stinky. Smellagram, smellagram for Casper. So, quite simply, just shoot Stinky with it. Repeatedly. And he'll try and shoot you with his uh, trademark odour. Ow, I'm hit! And there we go, defeated him. So now... Casper's missing his face again. Why is that happening? Two Lazarus parts. And I was sitting directly on top of what appeared at the end of that boss battle, a bag of fool's gold coins. Oh, and also, now we've lost the perfume. There's no longer a requirement for it, so the game took it away from us. But we've got two Lazarus parts already. Although we won't be able to use the camera for quite some time. But if you do want to, you know, just play with the camera. If you use it, the camera will flash. The um, screen will flash. And that's about it. One, two. Okay, so I have two of the uh, puzzle pieces. I wonder where the third one could be. So you will pick up quite a few more icons by the end of the game. I don't think all of them are strictly necessary, though I've never legitimately beaten this game. And by legitimately, I mean there is actually a cheat code. Now, I'm not entirely sure what triggers things like that, but it seems to be when you act when you enter certain places, it uh, can activate doors to open. Bag of Fool's Gold Coins. Another door open. An iron key used up. And, well here, you have to guess the password. Which is that. There is a green key. Is there any, uh... Nope. Yes, there's a cheat code for this game. I'll show it after I've beaten the game. Like in the last episode. But it's quite useful and it allows you to cheat past pretty much everything. Hmm? Could have sworn I... Oh yes, um... Basically, the game crashed earlier on. I thought I'd covered it up quite well because I had to replay through everything. But I guess I forgot to unlock that. Bonus points if you could notice the exact moment at which I cut the video and restarted. So there's the fourth puzzle piece. I assumed it was in the maze, to be honest, because I think we can now access the maze. Now that we're in Act 2. So, let us just pick up the second of the game's morph icons. Ball. The bouncing Ball morph icon. And this is the first power-up uh, which will uh, cost us morph points to keep active. So you simply toggle it on and off by pushing the Use button, which will morph Casper into a bouncy ball. And you want to hold down the higher button to bounce high enough to get through here. So R1, and then push circle to demorph. And yes, that's two of the uh, game's many morph icons. But I think, to be honest guys, now that we've picked up two morph icons and ended Act 1, this would be a good introduction to the series. So we're going to end the episode here. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Spark249. Have fun!